All right, so this is video one, part two. So after the first surgery to repair the ankle, um, we had, well, I had uh, a lot of success. It was healing great. And I went back to the gym and I was cranking it at the gym and losing the baby weight. And I kept doing what my physical therapist had said and what my doctor was saying. And uh, what that led to was pain in the ankle. And I kept telling them that there was pain that was in the ankle right at the juncture of the Taylor Dome and the tibia. And I was ignored for nine months. And finally, I went to my doctor screaming until he did an x-ray and we realized that there was a large bony spur that had formed during that nine months and it gotten pretty big. It was like a centimeter and a half. And it had drilled a hole basically from doing the work. I had pushed a hole into my tibia. So he went to repair that and some arthritic damage. And when he did that second surgery, he said that his plan was to remove all the damaged cartilage and to microfracture the Taylor Dome with the intention of creating a bone slurry with red blood cells that would act like cartilage and make cartilage grow. And when he said that, I said, no. I mean, I have a, I'm a trained physical anthropologist and my background was in degenerative joint disease and paleopathology. So I told him, no, like cartilage doesn't regrow. It never, ever regrows. So uh, he was basically providing me with false information and gaslighting me. And um, I finally told him that he can go in and he had my permission to do the surgery, to repair the ligaments, remove the bone spur, but not to microfracture or take out the cartilage unless something had happened that was the only possible way to save my foot. So if something was happening with the, like the, an arterial issue or, you know, whatever, if there was some reason that the only way they could save my foot was to do this procedure, then he had permission. But otherwise, he only had permission to go in and remove the bone spur. What he did was went in and did what he wanted to do. And he removed all the cartilage, not just part of it, but every cartilage piece. And he microfractured a very healthy Taylor dome. And uh, it caused massive blood clots and uh, hematomas. They had to be drained. Um, and then it uh, caused avicular necrosis. The uh, posterior portion of my talus collapsed and I wound up being on a scooter for another 10 months unable to put any weight on my foot for fear of me being completely handicapped and we uh, we talked with multiple people and um, said that if I had AVN that was like that was bad that was like permanent disability. Um, and the doctor who did this quickly wrote me off and gave me to one of his colleagues who was more specialized in AVN. And his role was to basically continue to do surgeries to attempt to save the ankle. And so I had multiple surgeries of him taking cartilage plugs out of my knee, putting it into the ankle, uh, trying to um, fix and repair the ligaments because the first surgery uh, where the ligament was reattached, that came apart. Turns out that doctor, uh, the one who also did the avicular necrosis, um, 
used uh, temporary uh, sutures. And so everything came apart. And um, it was bad. It was just one nightmare after another. And it just kept getting worse and worse. So I saw a second doctor. Well, by this time, it was like the fourth or fifth doctor. But um, a doctor, a second surgeon, and his idea was to go in and undo all that the other doctor had done and to do it correctly. What we found was that the screws that had been put in by um, the second surgeon who uh, was to take care of the avicular necrosis, uh, the screws that he put in uh, unwound, they came out and it whipped uh, my nerves and veins together and it literally had them wrapped around the screws and um, had caused so much nerve damage and vascular damage that parts of my foot were dying. Um, so the, the third surger, surgeon that I saw um, went in and removed those screws and he said it literally looked like the Battle of Fallujah in my ankle. He said it was the worst thing he had ever seen in his entire career. There was a 10 and a half piece of nerve bundle and vein that was removed. And now I have permanent nerve damage where I cannot feel the top of my foot at all. Like I can stick pins through it and not feel it. Um, so then I was just left with intense bone pain and a horrible limp. Um, so the third surgeon uh, did that surgery to take the screws out and to try and repair it by putting in a new plate and he was going to fuse my ankle which I did not want but he promised me that by fusing it I would be able to do all the activities I used to do because by this time it had been seven years of not being able to hike or dive or um, take long walks or s just basic swim. I couldn't even do any basic swimming. Um, I was having trouble going up and down stairs. I was in constant pain. Um, I couldn't work out. I couldn't run after my kids. And as a result, I had gained weight. Um, so the third surgeon uh, was going to fuse it and he promised that I would be able to do all those activities again, which was a lie. I even asked because I had researched it and looked it up and he maintained that I would be able to do everything again. So he fused my ankle. He put in a J plate in the top of uh, my ankle and from the middle of the tibia down to the top of my ankle and it didn't heal. I had complained consistently about pain and the pain would get so bad that it would drop me to my knees and I'd either throw up or pee. Um, And that was more than a year, more than a year of just some of the worst pain you can imagine. So on July 27th, I had gone back to that third surgeon and begged for him to take my ankle off. That all the research I had done at that point showed that removing the lower leg and putting in a prosthetic would be the best course of action for a better quality of life. And it was a crazy decision. It was one that was not come by lightly. Um, and I begged him to do it. And he asked me to get a second opinion, which I did. 
at UVA Health, um, Dr. Cooper. And Dr. Cooper looked at it and said, normally I would not do this in someone so young, but yes, I'll do it right now if you want me to. So we took that information back to uh, the other surgeon and the decision was going to be that on July 27th of 2020, uh, I was gonna have removal. And then pre-surgery, we went in and he changed his mind. And he gaslighted me and he just didn't listen. And it got to the point where he was having a conversation more with my husband than he was me. And he determined he was going to go in and try to fuse it a second time because the other procedure didn't work. It didn't fuse at all. So when he went in on July 27th, he had found that the plate that was on top of the ankle had been eaten by my body. There was only fragments of it. It looked like shrapnel. And then the other plate had not fused at all to my tibia. And so what it had been doing was um, rubbing in and out. So the, the screw was going into the tibia and every time I'd walk, it would come out and then go back in and then come out. So in my shin, it was just this constant nail, the screw going in and out. Um, so you removed that plate and took my ankle and crossed it like this with two big, huge screws and put in a bunch of red blood cell slurry. And that's where I'm at now. So it's been 12 surgeries, two attempts by taking materials out of my knee. So my knee got messed up. And as a result, I went from diving and hiking mountains and running with special forces and doing extreme stuff at the gym and martial arts to not being able to walk across my kitchen. My average day is filled with such extraordinary pain. Um, a good day might be on a scale of one to 10, a level six in the morning, but by afternoon is easily at an eight, by nighttime it's nine. On a bad day, it starts out at a nine can barely walk upstairs. I will have sporadic pain through the bone that will drop me to my knees. I can't go on any kind of walk with my family. I can't walk my dogs. I can't go to the grocery store by myself. I have a service dog now. He helps with the pain, just helps me refocus because my PTSD has gotten pretty bad over all of this. Um, I've become depressed. I've gained more weight. I'm now the heaviest I've ever been in my life at uh, 219 pounds. Um, and on average, I take four 10 milligram oxycodone on top of um, an extended release Nucenta, which is what they just started giving me, um, as opposed to extended release oxycodone, which was no longer being effective. So now I have to take a bevy of painkillers just to function. Um, It's horrible. And my drug, <laughs> my depression obviously has gotten a whole lot worse. Um, so the good news is that we went back and we saw Dr. Cooper and on April 27th, I will have my lower leg finally removed and we will start a whole new journey of which this video is the very beginning. And hopefully I will get my life back. And I'm so excited.
so excited. So I'll talk more next video about um, some of the things coming up, what this process is like, um, and I'll just continue to document the entire thing of well, um, as well as stories and um, more about me, I guess, more about what I do. And then how is all of this going to change and um, be modified as I take on this new role, which, like I said, I'm very excited about because the idea that I will be able to walk with my kids and hike and walk my dogs and, oh my gosh, if I could go diving again, just any of this is so thrilling. So here we go.